and segments that intersect circles. So we spent some time yesterday talking about the different lines and segments that intersect circles. What were the two lines that had special names that intersected circles? Tangent and secant. So tangent and secant. You want to label your tangent and your secant. So a hint on your paper, it doesn't actually show the arrows, but the lines that keep going are your tangent and your secant. So in this case, I have a tangent here, and I have a secant up here. If you want to get your notes out from yesterday, if that will help you, please feel free to do so. And you can also, when you have time, go back and define those again, because writing the definitions over and over again can help you learn and remember the material. Secant, yep, S-E-C-A-N-T. Some people in my fifth hour class wanted to call it secant. Okay, so secant and tangent are two lines. The rest of them are all segments. One segment starts at the center and goes to the outside of the circle. What is that called? Radius. So we have a center here. And, yep, secant, S-E-C-A-N-T. Um, this should be tan tangent. Should be a T, sorry. Okay, secant, tangent, radius. What's the name of a segment that goes through the center and has endpoints on the circle? That is a chord, but specifically if it goes to the center, then it has to be a diameter. So any segment that has endpoints on the circle is called a chord. If it specifically goes through the center, then it's a diameter. Okay. So when you have some time this evening when you're reviewing your notes, it's not a bad idea to go back and redefine these terms on this paper. Okay. Questions on this? Okay, so we have one more arrow pointing to a point. We didn't talk about this yesterday. This is called a point of tangency. And it is that one point where that line, that tangent line, touches the circle. What questions do you have about this slide? None were good. We had some practice on this yesterday, right? Okay. Next slide. Okay. On your sheet, I want you to determine segment DC is what? DC. Segment DC going from D to C is best name for it is a diameter. If you has have said chord, you'd be at, you'd be correct as well, but the better answer is diameter because it goes through the center. Okay? So DC is a diameter. Okay? Line DF is a tangent. From, from your notes from yesterday that should have helped you prepare for today. Okay? The next one, line BC. Line BC is called a... The only two that are lines are tangents and secants, right? Is BC a tangent? It's a secant. Why? Goes all the way through and it touches in two points. So this is a secant. And segment AC is a radius. Okay. Everybody so far so good? Okay, I'll give you a couple seconds.
All right. Here we go. Next slide. So now we want to talk about common tangents. If a segment is tangent to a circle, it touches it in exactly one spot. If a segment is or a line is, is tangent to two circles, it can be called a common tangent. It's a tangent that they both have in common. Finish? Not quite. Okay, so if a tangent line is common to two circles, okay, it touches both circles in only one point each. Do circles that are, if we have a circle within a circle, is it possible for it to be a common, to have a common tangent? No, because a, a tangent to this circle would be a secant to the outer circle, right? Okay, so this one has no common tangents. Perfect. None is fine. Zero. It is a weird word. And it, we used it a lot last chapter, right? When we were talking about sines, cosines, and tangents, different, different use of this. All right, so the next one. Will we have a common tangent with this next one? Yes, we have one line that we can draw that would be tangent to both circles, that would touch both circles in the same spot. And so this is one common. And I'm going to add a word here. We're going to talk about it in just a second. has one common exterior tangent. Okay. How about the next pair of circles? Will that have a common tangent? It will have a common interior tangent. I like that idea. So this will be the common interior tangent. We have to get the vocabulary down first, and then we'll, we'll talk about some of the math that we can apply. Okay? Now, that's one common interior tangent, but guess what? Is there, are there other tangents that we could potentially draw? Where, where else? On the outside, right? Not just between them, but could we have one going? Yeah, on both sides. So we can have two common exterior tangents as well. if I draw good lines. So this one has three common tangents. One is interior, and two of them are common exterior tangents. Okay. Finally, let's look at our last pair of circles. How many common tangents can we have between them? Okay. So, good question. So, we can have the common exterior tangents, right? If I do a tangent, not a secant. Okay. Do you see that these can touch in just one spot? Okay. So, two common exterior. And Brandon suggested that we could make them cross. So what if we went like so? And I drew a secant there, not a tangent. I apologize. Okay. And those would be our two common interior. So what can we, it is on the inside or between, and the definition that the book, it, it, and it's okay to think of it in that term, or terminology, but the definition of the, of the book is going to say that they are common interior or internal tangents if they intersect the
the segment that joins the centers of those two circles. So if I join these two, can you see that those red ones are going to intersect a segment connecting the centers? Okay, those are internal tangents. Okay, and if I draw a segment connecting these two, this red one will be a, com a common internal tangent. I'm using internal and, and exterior instead of ex external and interior instead of internal. Should use the right terminology here. Okay. Make sense? What questions do you have about this slide? Okay, we're good. Um you yeah, that's that's what you would the difference between the internal and the external tangents means that we have if it's internal, it would cross a line connecting the centers of the circles. Okay? An internal tangent crosses or intersects the segment that joins the centers of the circles. Are we good? Ready for the next slide? Okay. Next slide says we have a theorem. Okay. This theorem is going to go in your box, top of the box. Mm -hmm. Sorry, stepping back for just a second. A lot of it's vocabulary, so we've got to get the vocabulary down so you, I'm not speaking a foreign language up here. And you hear people saying that someone's off on a tangent. What does that mean? Yeah, they're just kind of going off and it doesn't really relate to things and so forth. It's kind of out on the exterior of of the conversation or what have you. That's where they're coming, where that term is coming from. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so here is a theorem from this chapter, this section. And this section, the tangent line or a tangent is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. That goes in your box, yep. So a tangent line or a tangent is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. Or at the point of tangency, if you want to call it that. So we have a 90 degree mark there. Um, it's actually drawn for you, I think, okay? But then we're going to work a couple of examples right below it, okay? There's not a lot of space in them, so I apologize for that. All right, so the next one says, is ST, segment ST, or line ST, tangent to circle P? Now, notice the circle P. This is how your book is going to abbreviate circle P. So it, they don't want you to confuse it with an O or a zero. So they put a dot in the center. So that's the symbol for circle. And we want to know, is it tangent to circle P? So what did our last slide just say about tangents? Okay, so we think it is because they intersect, but 
What if this was really not a tangent? What if it is a secant and it intersects it in more than one spot? That's possible, right? So it's supposed to intersect it in one spot, and if it does, the radius to that spot is supposed to be a right angle. Okay? So what can we do to check and see if we have a right angle here? We could do the Pythagorean theorem. We want to know if we have a right angle there. And if we do, then a squared plus b squared will be equal to c squared, right? So which would be our hypotenuse if this is a right angle? 51. We want the 51 all by itself. We want to know, is that equal to what plus what? 24 squared plus 44 squared. Okay? So we're going to check. And these are large numbers. You've got to use your calculator here. Twenty-four squared is five seventy-six. Does someone have fifty-one squared for me? Twenty-six eleven, oh one, and we want to compare that to what's forty-four squared. Nineteen thirty-six. So let's add the nineteen thirty-six and the five seventy-six to it. It's looking close, but. Right, 2601 is not equal to 2512. In fact, it's bigger than that, right? So this is an obtuse triangle, not a right triangle. So this is not tangent. Okay. Right, you'd have to have a right angle there in order for that to be a tangent. Okay, so we know it's not a right angle. Okay, easy enough? Especially after the Pythagorean theorem work we did last chapter, right? All right, so next slide is right below this on your sheet. This is the hardest problem you'll have to do on this section. On this section. Okay. And this is an Algebra 2 type of problem. So this is preparing you for Algebra 2 next year. So P is the point of tangency. Okay, They're telling you that P is the point of tangency. That means PQ is tangent. So we do have a right angle there. Now that we know that we have a right angle there, we have a hypotenuse and two legs, don't we? What will the Pythagorean theorem say this time? Twenty-four plus r squared, that's the hypotenuse, right, equals 36 squared plus r squared. Okay, so this is the hardest type of problem you'll have algebraically to do on this section. So make sure you write it down, just like number 24 in your assignment today. Okay, I'll have it for you in just a second. Okay, so the key to knowing how to do this is to realize that this is really 24 plus r times 24 plus r. So when you take 24 plus r and you multiply it by 24 plus r, how do we handle something like that from last year? Foil. We have to foil it out. What does foil mean? First, outer, inner, and last. Okay, and these are big numbers, so we'll have to break out our calculator again. So 24 squared, 576. That's our first. Outer, 
24 times R is 24R. Enter R times 24 is 24R again. And R times R is R squared. So how much how many R's do we have? 24 and 24 is a total of 48. So 48R plus an R squared equals what's 36 squared? Okay, good news, we have r squared on both sides. So what happens if we subtract r squared from both sides? It's gone. Those disappear. Okay, so now it's a matter of getting numbers to one side and variables to the other. So if I have 576 plus 48r equals 1296, and I want to get the r's by themselves, what do I do? Yep, take away the 576 from both sides. Okay. Big one or a small one? Okay, you bet. So take 1296 minus 576, and what do we get? I just stocked up today. You're welcome. So 1296 minus 576 was how much? 720. And now I want to get the R by itself, and 48 is being multiplied by it. So divide. Fifteen. What questions do you have about this slide? I'll leave it up there for a bit because you've been on your phone. Okay. All right. So we have R that is 15. Now the key here is most people want to call this 24R, but do you see why it has to be R plus 24? Okay, we can't just multiply them, we have to add them up. And then the second thing is that you have to remember not to just square the first and square the last. We have to FOIL it out to get our middle two terms. Okay, you want to see a shortcut for FOIL on these? Okay, shortcut. And you can leave it at FOIL, okay? But a shortcut when you're squaring two terms, uh, squaring a binomial, is to square the first term. Square it and then add twice the middle term, or the, the middle, the, sum, the product of the middle terms. So you take the, the r times the 24 and double it. And then square the last. So you square the first term, multiply the two middle terms together, and double them and square the last, and you'll get the same thing. A lot like FOIL. FOIL is fine if you like that, if you prefer. All right, next slide. All right, here's a key idea as well. And this is on your sheet already. Okay? Tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. What does congruent mean? They're the same. They equal the same thing. Okay? So, in this case, RS, segment RS, will be equal to segment TS. Okay? So, let's look at an example of the kind of problem they'll ask us to do with this. Okay? We have two tangents coming from a common external point, point J. So, they have to be congruent, right? So, what should our equation say? Set them equal to each other. Okay? So 3y minus 17 is 64. I'm going to add 17 to both sides. 
And 3y becomes 81. So y is 27. Okay. Easy enough, right? It's one of your easier problems. Because these two will be congruent to each other. Set them equal and solve. Okay. It does. Like a flashlight. Mm -hmm. Divided by 3. Yep, we had 3y. I just ran out of space. Okay. All right. Assignment. Coming at you.